The chair recognizes the gentleman from Idaho, Mr. Labrador, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rosenstein, for being here today. Um, I, I, I shudder at some of the questions from the other side, and I just want to ask you a quick question. Have you ever said that you are the president's wingman? No, sir. Has the current attorney general of the United States ever said that he is the president's wingman? Not to my knowledge. But yet, the attorney general under President Obama said that he was the president's wingman, and I never heard a single Democrat object to that. So it's kind of ridiculous to sit here and try to question your integrity or trying to question whether somebody's going to be loyal to their president or not. As you clearly indicated, you can be both loyal to the Constitution and to the president of the United States. As long as there's not a conflict of interest, as long as you're not doing anything that is inappropriate, it's okay to be the president's wingman. It's also okay to say that you're going to be loyal to the president as long as they're not asking to do anything that is illegal. Isn't that correct? Yes. So, what was the goal of the Russians when they tried to interfere with the elections in the United States? The assessment of the intelligence community, as reflected in their public report, is that the goal of the Russians was to uh, undermine American uh, confidence in democracy. So, to undermine the Americans... That's what I'm paraphrasing, Congressman. Yeah. I don't have it in front of me. So they, they try to undermine the public faith in the U.S. democratic process. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. I believe that no one in the United States has done more to undermine the belief in the United States democratic process than the Democrats and the press in some cases when they continue to report on false allegation after allegation after allegation. In fact, what you see from the Democrats is that they move from one allegation, that allegation is proven to be false, and they move to the next one, and they move to the next one, and they move to the next one because they're unhappy with the results of the election. Can you tell me why the independent counsel was actually appointed? It's a special counsel, Congressman. I've explained publicly uh, that I appointed the special counsel based upon the unique circumstances in order to promote public confidence, and I have nothing to add to that. So why, when Mr. Mueller was charged with investigating, he was charged with investigating, quote, any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of Donald Trump and any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation, end quote. That charge is overly broad, but there's been two uh, prosecutions, or, or at least two charges so far brought by the independent counsel. Is that correct? Four individuals charged, two uh, pleaded guilty, and two will stand trial. Have any of them been charged with any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with that? campaign for President Trump. Congressman, the charges speak for themselves. I'm not going to comment beyond what's in the charging documents. But is there anything in those charging documents that there was a coordination between the Trump administration and the Russians? Congressman, I'm not going to comment beyond what's in the charging documents. Uh, I think you can draw your own conclusion. So something I do agree with my friends on the other side is that we should get to the bottom of, we should know the truth. We should know whether there was collusion between Russia and the President of the United States. We should also know whether there was collusion between any department who tried to interfere with our elections. So can you tell me, was there collusion between the DOJ and Fusion G GPS to use a Democratic-funded document for political and legal purposes? I don't know the answer to that, Congressman. I would simply point out that the language I actually used in the appointing order was coordination, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that was the language used by Director Comey when he publicly testified uh, about an ongoing investigation. I did not use the word collusion. Okay. So that coordination, has, it, was there any coordination between the DOJ and Fusion GPS to try to undermine an election of the United States? If there were, Congressman, I'd be very concerned about it. As you know, there are ongoing reviews. And I'm so, not in position to comment about that. So there are ongoing reviews. So there could potentially be an investigation where the, the DOJ and members of the DOJ actually colluded with an enemy of a political party and a political candidate to uh, undermine the elections of the United States. If there's any evidence that warrants it, Congressman, we'll do what's appropriate. All right. So I think if you want to, to restore the trust of the American people, 
I think the Department of Justice has a duty to give us all the information that we have been asking for. We need to find out who started this investigation. We need to find out what the purpose was. If you have an individual who actually had a, a desire to have an outcome in a political race, and they decided to use the Department of Justice to investigate their political opponents, I think that is one of the worst crimes that has occurred in the history of the United States Do you, when it comes to politics. Do you agree with that? Mm, uh, it, it would, it, if that were what happened, Congressman, it would certainly be of great concern. All right, well, I hope that you are truly investigating this and that we get to the bottom of this. Thank you very much, and I yield back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Swalwell, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome, Mr. Rosenstein, and Thank please you. express my thanks to your uh, employees who serve at our national uh, interest every day uh, and do very important work at the department. Uh, Mr. Rosenstein, have you spoken with the president since you were appointed? Of course. Okay. And is that in a one-on-one -on -one setting? Uh, I've never spoken with the president in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Okay. Has he called you since you've been appointed? By telephone? Yes. Okay. And uh, what was discussed? As I said, Congressman, uh, I've told you that if I were told to do anything inappropriate, I'd talk about it. But okay. if the President's consulting me about matters within my official responsibility, that's part of the way you run the government. Did he discuss at all Mr. Mueller's investigation? I'm not going to comment, Congressman, about my communications with the President. How many times has he called you? Congressman, I do not, uh, I'm not going to comment about my communications with the President. There is nothing wrong with the President consulting with his Deputy Attorney General <coughs> about matters within the jurisdiction of the Justice Department, as long as it's not inappropriate. And Mr. Rosenstein, I agree, except that this president has demonstrated uh, and that's been expressed through a, that testimony from James Comey that has not been contradicted under oath multiple times that he is willing to talk to uh, individuals uh, at the department about ongoing investigations. That, that's where the concern arises. With respect to Attorney General Sessions' uh, recusal, uh, was he involved at all in the decision by the department to allow reporters to review the text messages that you discussed earlier? Not to my knowledge. Will you tell us if he was? Uh, if, if, I, if I learn about it, if it matters, Congressman, as I said, there's not, there, I'm not aware of any impropriety in what the department has done in making these text messages available. But Attorney General Sessions is recused from Bob Mueller's investigation, right? Attorney General Sessions is recused from Director Mueller's investigation, correct? And these text messages related to an individual on Bob Mueller's investigation? I, I, I don't want to argue with the Congressman. I, well, I just, I just I'm want to aware make sure. of the recusal, and uh, I'm not aware of any evidence that the Attorney General has violated his recusal. Uh, Mr. Rosenstein, if you are overseeing an investigation and lead a team of investigators, and you learn that one of the investigators has demonstrated a perceived bias against an individual in the investigation, should you A, keep the person on the team, or B, remove the person from the investigation? B. And knowing that fact pattern, what did Bob Mueller do uh, with a similar fact pattern? He chose the correct option. Mr. Rosenstein, uh, the President has said a number of things about you, the Attorney General, the FBI being in tatters, he even compared our intelligence community, uh, which your employees are a part of, to Nazi Germany. And I want to ask, considering uh, his continued disparagement of the department and your employees, are your employees proud to work for a person who holds their high integrity in such low regard? Congressman, my employees are, I believe, proud to work for the Department of Justice. Some of them support a particular president, some of them don't, but as long as they do their job appropriately, uh, that's my concern. Well, I, I agree, and I, I hope so, and I hope that's the case. Uh, Mr. Rosenstein, your testimony today is that you believe Bob Mueller is a person of high integrity. Is that right? Yes. You believe that his investigation is being conducted fairly. Is that correct? Yes. You also believe that, and you understand that he's publicly indicted two individuals with respect to his investigation. Correct. He's also obtained two guilty pleas with respect to his investigation. Correct. Is there good cause to fire Bob Mueller as we sit here today? Not to my knowledge. Now, I am concerned uh, that my House Judiciary Committee colleagues, uh, particularly in the majority, have uh, signaled uh, quite indiscreetly today uh, that they would probably give the President a pass if he were to fire uh, or order you to fire uh, Bob Mueller. Uh, there have been a number of statements uh, attempting to undermine uh, the good character uh, of Bob Mueller. Uh, that concerns me because that uh, would certainly uh, fly in the face uh, of the rule of law in this country. It would not be okay, I believe, with 
the American people or uh, the spirit uh, that our country was founded upon. Mr. Uh, Deputy Attorney General, your investigation is a very narrow bridge. The important part, I believe, for our country is for you to not be afraid. During this, these trying times, we need you to be fearless. We have a president who has demonstrated a willingness to involve himself in ongoing investigations that involve he and his family. And for the sake of our country, for the sake of rule, and law, rule of law, I hope that you continue to demonstrate uh, the character that got you into this position and that has given us uh, as a committee, I think, uh, faith in your ability to carry out that mission. I yield back.